there seems to be something missing. What is it? Huh. There we go. I've been sick all week, so I haven't been able to wrap this project up. Basically, all I need to do is add some kind of support here so that I can do a bit of light towing work. And it looks like I could mount that along the bottom, but I don't think it'd be very good. It'd be better if I could mount it on the sides. So I have these uh, hitches here, which uh, are not really intended for this, but they're, they're for putting like a little tow line thing on, but I have this for uh, a hook. These are all things I've had laying around for years that I just didn't get around to using. And I'll get uh, one and seven eighths on here, even though I really need some two inch, most likely, for my trailer. But uh, again, not a big deal. I should be able to fit over it. <clears throat> so what I'd like to do is combine those using this piece of scrap I found in the woods, because I just find everything in the woods. And uh, maybe the side mount I can fabricate out of this. This is some kind of office chair piece here that I found in the woods. So uh, I figure I can cut off this stuff, which is about a quarter inch thick, where these chairs or where these arms are, and uh, bend that over for mounting to the side. All right, I have this bit from the office chair uh, cut off and polished up with a flap disc, and I have this piece acting as a support. I'm going to be welding this side here. Something something like this. My next biggest challenge is I have to bend these to a right angle. And that's not going to be easy. Pretty much there. Got the powder coat off of these, cleaned up all this stuff. <laughs> well, I ashamedly reverted back to 6013, which I still think has plenty of penetration for quarter inch, but I just cannot for the life of me get these AC 7018s to work. I don't know what I'm missing. I've watched so many tutorials on it. I can get the angle, you know, I was doing a really extreme long angle, almost parallel, and uh, I still could not get the thing to hold the arc. Well, this is a terrible welding job. <laughs> First, I kicked the amperage way up because I wanted to make sure that it had really good penetration because I was using 6013 and I felt it just kind of riding the surface. But uh, <laughs> what happened was I ended up making a few wormholes because the amperage was so high. Probably should have just kept it at a lower amperage and just gone steady and slowed it down. So then I kind of skimmed the top and tried to build up a layer a little bit, make it a little less shitty, but well, anyway, it just turned out really ugly and I'm so fucking sick right now and just feeling like crap, I should just stop while I'm ahead. Here's a simple example. See how these are two different orientations? That was not intentional, but I'm definitely not gonna change it. <laughs> I'm just kind of oblivious and muddled in the head right now. Behold my travesty. I mean, my creation. Oh. Still warm from breathing life into it. I think this will work out pretty well, actually. You may be wondering about the quality of the welds. They're actually fine. Uh, 
I don't know exactly how much weight they would handle, but I imagine many tons. And uh, this is connecting to my little electric vehicle here. <laughs> it's not gonna be able to do crap with it, you know? So uh, I can hold the trailer, I can like pull it around. Uh, I'm actually mostly excited to use this for tight maneuvering. It's not something I had considered, but I have a bunch of logs to move in this one area that I can't get the tractor into. So this thing in first or second gear is going to work really well for just pulling those around. Ah, job hastily done. So, weakest parts about this. These screws, or rather these bolts, are uh, complete crap from Harbor Freight. Just come in one of those miscellaneous kits. And I know from experience these shear immediately, so they're very mild. Uh, what else? Well, I heated this up and then I let it uh, cool down at room temperature, essentially. So this is probably essentially annealed. So um, that's probably a bit soft, though I still think for these purposes it should be fine. Generally, the uh, tongue for a trailer should be able to hold about 200 pounds. And that's what I weigh, so let's see if it'll hold me. <laughs> wow. Yeah, as expected, the weakness are those bolts. I dare not tighten them down any further either because uh, they're such mild steel. I know if I keep turning them, they'll simply snap in half. They're, you know, plastic either, they're so soft. All right, ready for a little test driving with the transmission lubricated, the new motor. These batteries are still fairly charged. I uh, threw this ramp together to get it in and out of my workshop, so that's nice. This probably isn't the most scientific test, but I'm going to space these boards out by 10 feet and then I'm going to drive past on fifth gear and see just how fast this vehicle can actually go. Surprisingly, on fifth, I can actually go pretty consistently. This is my 4x8 trailer, rated at 2,000 pounds or something like that. Uh, have it mounted on this. It's a bit lower than I'd prefer, but there are a bunch of batteries in the way, so it might be about as good as I can get. So that probably weighs around 150 pounds or so, maybe more. And of course there's the weight of the trailer, which is probably at least a couple hundred, two or three hundred pounds, maybe more. <clears throat> and that was in fifth gear, and it did stress the motor a bit. It's warm, and the uh, conductors are warm too. Nothing too serious. So this thing is reading around 120 degrees with my uh, infrared gun. Which, yeah, that's probably about right. I wouldn't be surprised if it was even close to 140 or so. This isn't Fahrenheit I'm referring. And, uh, yeah, it's pretty hot. The conductors themselves, eh, not so much, but this poor casing is, is pretty darn warm. I kind of feel like it should have had some heat fins. But I'm gonna have to let this cool for a while before I continue testing. I don't want to give it an unfair kind of task when it's so overheated. Another thing that's interesting to note is that this motor is maybe half the size of the other motor it, it replaced. It just happens to be rated at 24 volts. Nonetheless, this is doing a heck of a lot of work, around 3000 RPM. It was actually vibrating a little bit, and I think that was the belt slipping. Nonetheless, what that kind of indicates is that this had so much load on it you know, that it might be at sort of the outer limit of what the lawn tractor can handle, given the transmission as it is. Which is impressive. It means that at the highest load this thing can pull, which was probably at least 500 pounds, I just put that trailer away by hand and just pushing it even on wheels is, is a ton of work. So that trailer probably weighed over 500 pounds just on its own. As far as the batteries, we're still at 24.5 volts after all that work 
which uh, indicates to me it's barely straining the batteries, which means I probably could have gotten away with half as many batteries <laughs> and it would still be able to do a usable amount of work. In other words, the power supply outpaces the capability of the motor by a long shot. This motor is just not robust enough. I was hoping to use like a golf cart motor for it, but they were far too expensive. All right, pretty simple setup. Uh, this is a hunk of a log that's probably 200 pounds or so. Uh, it was actually quite a bit heavier, but uh, it has dried out a bit. It was all covered in vegetation over here. So pretty simple setup. I'm gonna be pulling this thing. I'm just gonna kind of take it downhill and see how it goes. I was able to haul that log, but it was kind of struggling as I kind of went back up another hill with it, uh, dragging that behind. So again, I feel like this poor motor is, uh, is just underpowered for this transmission. Even in first gear, it's kind of underpowered when it comes to hauling things. So for reference, this one is so soaking wet and heavy, <laughs> I can't even pull it myself. So it'll be interesting to see if this little underpowered EV will be able to do it. <laughs> well, in this case, uh, not a transmission issue, not a motor issue. The weight of this is so great based upon friction coefficient and how muddy it is, there's just not enough traction to even try. Well, there we have it. It's pretty clear in this muddy condition. I will not be able to pull anything substantial to complete my testing to its entirety, but overall I'm pretty happy with the way that this project turned out. And uh, although this motor is definitely underpowered, uh, it's actually okay. It seems to be doing a good amount of work without getting too hot. So I imagine my primary purpose of this thing, which is to kind of just drive it around to get from point A to point B with a little bit of equipment, uh, should be satisfied. And certainly the lifespan of the power supply itself is very good. We're at 24.3. I've been beating this thing up for a while now. So I think this turned out pretty well. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.